So yeah, tell me a little bit about how you know Peter Harris and Lee Scratch Perry. How do you get involved with these guys? Basically, the story of me and Lee Perry is like way back when I was like 10 or 11. Because I was so tall, I had all these kind of skinhead, really big skinhead, 20-year-old skinheads trying to like chat yeah. to me and, and fight me or whatever on the streets of Bristol, these different skinhead games. And I didn't really like the skinhead fashion, to tell the truth. I was always, I was always a bit more into 50 stuff, but right. my older brother... They were hard, but then we got suede heads. Anyway, you go to one of these clubs with these nutters, they'd all be like skinheads uh, dancing to early Lee Perry things. Yeah. He was the first real character before Bob Marley or anybody. I mean, Lee found Bob Marley, you know. He was the oh, first yeah, real character to bring out that stuff. And then about 17, when punk was going on, we really got, I was really into dub music down in Bristol, like, I don't want, you know, it's a big bass city. And then straight away, you know, me and Adrian, I made records as Mark Stewart, the pop group, we immediately started copying. We were trying to get King Tubby to produce our first record in like 78 post-punk record, right? Wow. And then with Dennis yeah. Bavel. But that whole connection with dub, and I see dub as like fractures of a parallel universe. It's a way of desensitizing yourself so you can enter into a sort of shamanic field. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously a lot to do with like the fact that it's so innovative. And yeah, and it's, it's the always... chances, it's the risk-taking. Yeah, it's the risk taken, it's just doing something just because you feel like it might yeah, work. Yeah. Obviously Lee Perry had the thing of, there's all these kind of stories of him putting microphones backwards. In, under trees yeah. and... Plugging things in backwards, but it's that naivety, which I think is important yeah. for your kind of life force. Yeah, of course. Because often when you're a kid, they like, try and like, you get knocked a few times and more people just turn into zombies, but if you can keep that mad... That madness that still Lee's got that childlike excitement. That's, yeah. My mum reckons it's Asperger's. <laughs> do, do, do you know what I mean? But you should be like, yeah, no, of course. That's energy. It because I mean, he's, uh, he's 83, yeah. turning 83 this year, or yeah. 83 now. And that's not the mindset of a, an 83 year old man. You know, he's not thinking about his. I think it's perfect. He's not thinking about his pension. He's not thinking about, you know, his, his memoirs. I he's, think it's perfect. I think still, it's perfect, yeah. But I think the good thing about this sort of art, and the reason that I wasn't working in the factory and I tried to have a go with my own mad ideas, not that they're any good, is that it's not that art should be separate, separated. I was just chatting to another couple of people. It's not that they should be seen as different sorts of people, but yeah. I think it should, should encourage everybody to, be, to lay out their own shit. Yeah, no, that completely makes sense. You know? Yeah. And I mean, how, where do you think that kind of that energy, that genre, where, where is that going to go now? Well, like, you can kind of dub reality, you can kind of dub, yeah. you can kind of use it as a sort of mad sort of chance procedure thing to kind of dub up reality in that way of kind of, it's like Burroughs' cut-ups, a way of just mashing things up. And there's yeah. a lot of it going on in AI and digital sorts of thing. It's a way of thinking. It's yeah. a really weird way of thinking of like suddenly, it's interesting. If, 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 if a neuroscience, if a neuroscientist looked into Lee's head, yeah, it'd be like one of those cr crazy Star Wars five-dimensional chess sets. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but it'd, be, no, it'd be educational, I think. But do you think? And these, think these images is... are a are a doorway into Lee's. What's happening in Lee's head? Yeah, I, I completely agree. Like opening I mean, the door, and it's like whoa. Surely the fans as well. This is like kind of. I was saying it's it's kind of coming full circle. Yes. To like be a fan of him and, and know, when he used to draw in his studio in Jamaica the black art that place yeah, looks exactly. amazing because I remember at the same time I was in New York and I, I, there was a kid drawing on a wall near me and it was Keith Haring just drawing on a back in the 80s do you yeah. know what I mean that is a great there's a, there's a good kind of interventions that's like the pure expression of it and, yeah. and to have it in an actual just doodling form, really yeah and now it's in a frame and it's you know it's been produced over this I mean it's a 10 year project it's you know, it's it's an actual it's it's in a work now. Even though it's kind of this scrambled, scatterbrained mindset, I think to have it in these actual pieces of work is just really yeah. It's kind of perfect. It's it's like it's been actualized. The whole idea of him and his career and his mindset is now kind of I don't know how you if you'd agree with that. I don't. The problem is I started doing this kind of cut up of reality when I was about thirteen or fourteen. I'm a bit right. locked out of like normal reasoning I can't I, I don't understand I can't think on for somebody else's but like anyway do you, do you think everybody that's in, in that kind of music and connected with dub and Jamaican music do, do you share a kind of mindset where it's kind of I, so, I share I share, of I share a certain what I got from those early like spiritual kind of raster things and the sound systems that we used to my mates used to have and the, the crews used to come in from Jamaica and that and Shaka that sound system that dub mentality it was quite spiritual back in the 70s 
right? Yeah. And Lee was the kind of the real figurehead of some of those kind of conscious, kind of spiritual kind of vibrations, whatever the rest of call them. And I felt an empathy was that, not understanding, but I felt like there's a thing of upfulness when you just kind of stride for you know, it's, it's I made a, I, I, I spent a lot of time with like older rasters and played with them and stuff. It's, it's bizarre. It's like being with like a Zen master or something, you know. Yeah. I was sat with these two guys from Jamaica. I can't remember who they were. Two big guys from the seventies, proper gangsters, and they were like. After a while, they reckon oh, it's like being in a rough club in Bristol. Thing, or he's who's his nutter sat there. Oh, he's all right. He hasn't started or anything. And they'll say something to you after a few hours. And everybody's really out of it. This old wrestler came up to me. He said, "Mark, I was going what? He's going one hand washes the other." <laughs> You know, but listen, <laughs> Lee comes out with similar things. Once I was around Adrian Sherwood's yeah. house, right, and Lee was in the garden, he picked up some little pebble and started looking at it. It's the sort of thing I did when I was about five or six. And it's, you break, he doesn't know he's doing it, I don't think. But to us, it's like an art intervention when you crack, you break, you slide into reality and you, uh, and yeah. you slide back out again, which is wicked, I think. Yeah, no, it, And there's it, a it's prankster a to it, which is brilliant. Humor is brilliant. 